Just close your eyes and let them rest. I know it's hard to fall asleep, but do your best. 'Cause there's a place that I go to when I want to hide from all the shades of. Cause at times I think of leaving, my mind takes me back to fall. When the snow begins to sing, at night to warm. Morning, guys. So welcome back to. It's cold. <laughs> it's still cold. It's supposed to be warm. I just can't figure it out. There's sun, but it's windy. We got a rake. We got a shovel. Where are we dumping it? I got a garbage bag. Um, we'll dump it in there, and then we'll dump it in the garbage bag. All right. That sounds like a plan. So today is the day today is the day that we are going to clean up this yard i know it's only february in canada we never clean our yards in february ever i'm going to take advantage and clean up at least all the dog poo that we've had hey your dog might want to swing with me hey you want to go for a swing you want to go for a swing she looks like a meerkat which doesn't no she's so no. cute yay thank you uh, Sophie, first we're cleaning up dog poo. Oh, I want to test it. Okay, you can test it, and then we're cleaning up the dog poo. Just feel the wind If you look close You see the lilies dance And how they slowly grow I'm counting you Anyway, today is the day that we are going to try and get it all cleaned up, or at least most of it. I have to do the front yard, too, because... Gabby takes Molly out there and Molly poops in the front. I want to just, that's my big goal is just to get all like the poop and stuff picked up. And then once we're done, I'm going to tell you guys what we decided about Sophie's new horse. So finally have a plan and I want to bring you guys along because we're going to start this new journey. I'm counting years as they go by Now all the lilies are gone and aces brought to life Cause at times I think I'm leaving My mind takes me back to fall When the snow begins to sing at night to warm One thing that I want to do this summer is clean up this garden. Last summer, I didn't have much time, but I did empty this garden. This garden is just a big, mature mess. It's got grass everywhere. And one thing I hate about it is that it has these bushes, these, which I actually like these bushes. The only thing I don't like about them is that they attract praying mantis and I hate praying mantis because they bite praying mantis bite I also trimmed all these up at the at the end of last summer and they are all growing like crazy and then over on this side again it's all grass growing in the garden and especially over here this was all grass last year so it's my goal at least Ellie get over here come on my girl is coming I'll be there in a minute, Pen. I just want to clean up the rest of this poop. Come on. 
Use my mom voice. <laughs> you stay here. You stay here. Got it? All right, I'm just gonna do this little tiny bit. And then it will be done at least with the poop for today. I just don't like it in the areas that we, we go. And we use this area all the time. When we moved in, we weren't even able to see that there was a walkway here. I'm shocked. I just discovered a walkway. So I'm gonna get my little scrapey thing and I'm gonna scrape all the grass off of this and make it the walkway it was designed to be. All right, all the areas that I really wanted the dog poop picked up, we got done. Check, check mark. All right, let's go and do the rest of our chores. I missed it. Little Lola is a sunbather. Whenever she wants to sleep, she goes far away from the herd and she goes and sleeps by the fence line or she lays out in the sun. Yep. But I, I really feel bad for her, but her time is coming. Once we get actual babies, like a lot of them, and once they're weaned. Hi babies, why is she laying down? Are you gonna give birth soon? Uh, yeah, and um, so once he's mad at me because I woke him up. Did you wake why'd you wake him up? His poor mom is probably like, why'd you wake up my baby? <laughs> we actually have babies and we're milking, so there will be times when what? There will be times when the babies are away from their mom and she'll be watching them. Like she'll have friends. She's gonna make friends with the babies. She doesn't have horns and she's young, so she's a perfect candidate for being a babysitter goat she just can't babysit any bucks for very long <laughs> because soon they'll be ready to breed once he's old enough to breed Lola will be old enough to breed she wants to breed her to Lola him to Lola, him to Lola. Hi, sweet mama look at she comes up to me now she never used to come up to me ever she's the mom oh, he's so tired. miss oh. mocha oh don't you get too close <laughs> Everybody wants to be my friend. Because you are a brat. This guy. Boys are brats. He is. So this morning, Sophie made the trek down here a couple of times just to check on the baby because we keep losing him. We just, no matter what happens, we lose him. We lose him on the camera. And each time I'm like, Sophie, Sophie, you have to go down. You have to go down and check on the on the goat. And she, she comes down and she's halfway here. And then all of a sudden I see him appear on the camera. <laughs> and I just laugh. Okay, let's hurry up and do this. All right. So today we have to get our girls with the udders shaved down. So a little Winston has been out without a blanket for the last 24 said, hours without spot. a sweater. And he's doing okay. You're doing okay. Nice and warm. Tonight he's getting a sweater on though because it's supposed to get really, really, really cold in the night. She's just itching her face on it. I think she is just itching her face. That's a salt lick. Hey. Let her hey. itch her face. You're so, I want this thing back. You're so rude. I want this thing back. <laughs> so he actually was so cuddly this morning. He was cuddling into Sophie. Like he loves to be held. This guy it loves to be held. He cuddles and kisses her, puts his head like he's look, he's nibbling her face. Oh wait, you get there. She really wants to lick it. Don't anybody bother her. It's like one person wants something and then all of a sudden everybody so wants, it. wants it. <laughs> Ooh. What happens when you pick him up? Not pick him up. He tells us when he wants to be picked up. He's chill now. Yeah, a baby goat, if a baby goat does not want to be held, it will let you know. It, they scream at the top of their lungs, let me tell you. We have her on a uh, weight gain program to help her maintain her weight and gain some weight while she's nursing. It can be really hard for 
difficult, even for people sometimes, when you're trying to nurse a baby to maintain your weight. Okay, let's just take a look. Last look probably because her babies are coming in a week. What do you guys think? A week from Tuesday or a week from yesterday? Those are my dates, 140 days and 145 days. But she is looking big. So we're just gonna clean up her udder. There's the final look. They always look less big <laughs> in the camera, but oh my goodness, she's big. I feel confident that she's gonna have at least two babies and that's all that I want. You should do the udder too, Sophie. I can't do the udder. <sighs> so I don't want to hurt her. If you hurt her, then I can go at you. I Sophie and I are definitely noticing changes in her udder. Okay, no, 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 no. Stop, let me do it. <laughs> I know, I'm just saying don't go up past the tail. You just want like where her, where the baby comes out and then down. Um, well, we're, we're noticing big changes in their, her udder the same way that we noticed. Um, Stop judging me. The <laughs> same way we noticed Blossom's udder change a few days before, like a week before, or a good week before. Typically, if a mama has, typically if a doe has a lot of babies in there, they'll go a little bit sooner. Remember I told you guys it's 140 days to 150 days. Blossom gave birth on 120. 220 is um, the safe date. Just thought you should know that. Blossom gave birth on day 149 and she only had one buckling. And typically, goats will ha give birth earlier the more babies they have. So I'm hoping that she gives birth a week from monday no a week from thursday a week from yesterday but it's probably more like a week and a half we have to wait now that we've been milking we still have to milk blossom out sometimes once every like couple of days because he's still not nursing completely on both sides and she has a lot of milk and he's just one baby and typically when that situation happens oftentimes you'll have to milk out one side or you'll have to milk out a little bit because they just have so much milk that's why they're called dairy goats. So it's harder than you think. Like we got the back of her udder really good. And I tried. They're not sad. Yeah, it looks way too thick. You suck. I tried to get. She did it. She underneath the best that I could. And. Oh, you ran out of food. It was tricky. Maybe that's the problem. Let's give her some more food. Because I want to be able to, to milk her and not have hair fall into the milking bucket. She's going to get some more grain. Sophie went a little overboard up here, but I mean, that's what happens sometimes when you're learning. All right. We got goat number two that's being done today. No houses. <laughs> no houses. I'm not dealing with that boy. <laughs> We've just been wrestling. He's leaving the first time to get a chance. <laughs> so. Selma's pregnant to go. He looks pregnant. Like <laughs> Sophie, Sophie has the best sense of humor. Like, uh, I think she gets it from Sam because when you actually like get to know Sam and Sam's Stop actually like in entertaining and engaging, usually he's quiet. Stop. But when he is funny, he's a funny like Sophie. Like Sophie said, <laughs> we just had a big tussle with the boy with our weather because we have to catch the girls with grain to shave them. And then he comes obviously. If Don't do it too much on the sides there. They need to stay warm. It's okay. going to be really cold tonight. But anyways. So we're wrestling with the boy. And she says, that's it. He's sold. We'll sell him as pregnant because he looks it. <laughs> but when she, says, <laughs> when she says it is so much more funny. Remember, these guys are not that used to being on the stand yet. But they're doing much better. She just hopped right up there. She knew what to do. While we're down here, I want to tell you two things before we end this vlog. I want to tell you a quick story about, we get like a lot of comments from people about like, let them just have their babies natural. Ow. Nature will take its course. If a baby's meant to die, it's meant to die. Mom's no best. I'm not gonna go into that whole uh, whole story about how uh, just like people, goats oftentimes need help and assistance too. And having somebody there for you when you're giving birth sometimes it makes you feel- I'm not milking this one. <laughs> I'm, she's not, I'm not letting her 
one go for her because she chills out. Well, but this is what I was trying to say. Is that sometimes when you're with a goat during the birthing process and you help them when they're at their greatest need, in fact, all the time, this happens in wild animals too. Often when you are there, when an animal really needs you, it it bonds them to even stronger. Once got this rescue, there was this rescue, there was this a hoarding situation near us and the Humane Society went in and got 30 dogs and they were all this weird mixed breed with these big huge ears. I wish I had a picture of it. Anyway, they had to farm these puppies out to places because there were no, there was not enough room in the shelter. So we got one and she was about six or seven months old, just a baby and her name was, we named her Lady and she was a wild, never was outside a single day in her life, was never handled was never she lived in an apartment and 30 dogs with an old lady in an apartment and people walking by could smell it and they called and reported that the smell that's how they got help and anyway this dog I had to put a big crate in the middle of our kitchen and we had to climb in the crate with her to socialize her to get her used to our touch we'd have to like start really slow anyway it was a Maybe huge massive like process this. and that's she was mildly wild for the whole time we had her. She was just newly pregnant when we got her. And and I could and she was close to me. Like she would come and she would sit by me. But if I reached out towards her, she'd be really nervous. And just such a timid dog when we had her. Like so, so timid. And then I came home from work one day and she was in labor. And she just stared at me with these eyes. And I sat with her for the whole entire time. I sat with her for the whole night. I helped her through the labor. I helped her deliver her puppies. And from that moment on, she was my shadow. She never left me. She was like, she would sit right and lean into me. And it was that whole birthing process. Me being there when she needed someone the most. When she was scared. And, and I know it's instinct, but you still have fear. And helping her and taking care of her and her puppies really helped her bond to me and she got adopted and she got adopted to this amazing family I and they oh it just kicked me they named her lady jezebel and so she has like a really nice amazing life now and the biggest way we bonded was through me helping her deliver her babies when she was the most scared and needed someone the most this is the final look for little miss tilly these are her babies over here oh my goodness it'll kick you so Mocha, if you push its head, it will oh, kick you. Oh, they're big. It's actually so. Mocha felt so tight, like there was. An, oh my gosh, there's a buckling in here for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it's so big and it is really kicking me. So there's there's the udder. One week out, or actually two weeks out for her. Two two <laughs> two and a half weeks out. That's what it looks like. It's pretty full. Hasn't popped though, but I do notice that Tilly's udder looks like it's just starting to get ready to pop. Yeah, she's a cutie. I like her. Yeah, I'd rather get rid of Timbit. Yeah. I, mean, um, uh, I like taking this opportunity to feed her from my hand because it's bonding, huh? And she has bonded with me a little. She's just never gonna be like that really friendly goat like little Winston is. It's okay. All right, you're free. <laughs> they all want to get down and look around now and see what they can get. She definitely looks big. I, I think she's, oh, don't eat that. She looks big. She, to me, looks the biggest out of them all. Okay, so we're going to head up to the house now. I have editing to do. I'm going to edit Gabby's riding video from last night so you guys can see who she rode. You peed twice? Yes. One but before we go, I want to tell you what we decided for Sophie's horse. Hey. Okay, so you guys know I have trauma from buying horses. I have horses. I have a lot of trauma from horses. I can't even talk about Chino still without crying. Last night I was crying even at the barn, like trying to explain how to my friend how like he wants down and then he's like, wait, no, I want the down. difference between horses and every other animal is that you build this bond that's un unbreakable and it's something a bond that you don't get with any other animal because the connection between you two when you ride is unbelievable like it's you guys know I need to start so, this boy not to jump on me. so when you lose a horse that's not just a horse but your partner it's like awful like it's the worst it's it's the worst you guys know the struggle that we had with Chino we had him for six months 
and the first minute he went on grass, we brought him home and he went on grass after he was here for, after we had him for six months, he went lame and then we struggled with him for so long and then it's, I feel scared. I feel scared to trust. I feel scared like I have seen so much in the horse world just like, I've just seen a lot. And I'm scared. I, I don't trust people. I don't I don't trust. And having a horse is such a huge thing. I don't want to get a horse for Sophie and then like six months later it's lame all the time. I don't want a, another and even though we've never only we've only ever had one horse like that, I'm still traumatized by it. So I talked about it with Brandon last night and I said, like Brandon <laughs> Sophie needs a horse for the season. She wants to compete and compete and compete and compete. Oh and she needs a horse. And I said, I think what we have to do is I think that I want to lease as many horses as we can until we find the right one. And I think that's the way that I have to do it to feel confident. I told him like, I want to lease a horse and if it's right, we'll buy it. If it's not right, we're not going to buy it. And I, I want to stick to that. I'm a stronger person, a better person. I'm not afraid of hurting people's feelings. I have to do what's best for us because the amount of heartbreak that we had through the whole Chino thing, like you guys did not even see a half of it. We only shared with you guys like the tiniest bit and I can't do that again. So, so if he needs a very specific horse and that's our goal. So I told him it's time, like go out there. And before we were looking to buy a horse and I just can't commit to that. Like I just need time. I just need minutes to try and figure out. I need to be able to buy the right horse. And the only way I can see to do it is to lease horses after horses after horses until we find the right one so even if it's like a month to month lease even if even if it's for like four months or six months we're gonna start looking for Sophie's horse and it's gonna be a lease with the option to buy and I hate to do it that way because it always costs more money leasing a horse especially like a show horse is always um, the lease price is almost the same as a, a buy price so it's not cheap but it has to, uh, this is the way I'm gonna do it because even when you do a vet check, we did a vet check on Chino. We, we've did a, done a vet check on all of our horses and you guys know how it worked out for us with Chino. So this is what we're doing. So Sophie, any, well, Brandon's away for a little bit and we don't have lessons this week, but after that it is game on to find Sophie her show horse for the season. And that's, that's, I feel comfortable with that. So anyway, I just want to tell you guys that comment below, please, and tell me how you feel about it. Like, do you think right now a lease is good for Sophie till we find the right one? A lease with an option to buy. That's what I want. I want a horse that we can buy after we lease it if we love it. Are you okay with that plan? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bye, goats. <laughs> They're like, are we coming in for grain or what? <laughs> He's the first one at the gate. <laughs> This is where I know. he stands. He loves it here. He sleeps inside those. He sleeps inside those tires, or he sleeps underneath the feeder over there. All right, behave. We'll be back. Don't you know that you're beautiful?